Welcome to Zimmerman Podcast, episode 16. Today, I'm sitting down with one of my students, Cami Palmer. I first met Cami when she was in the wedding of a bridal client of mine, before I even created my signature course, The Business Behind the Blooms. Cami then bought BBB to help her figure out how to run her wedding rentals and floral business. Cami's sharing how she changed her money mindset through my program, Know Your Numbers, so she could turn her barely surviving business into a flourishing career. If your money mindset is like Cammie's was, just ignore the budget until it becomes a problem, then you have got to listen to this episode. You are not alone, and I know Cammie's story will resonate with just about all of you. Whether you struggle with purpose and finances in your personal life or with a business or side hustle, this episode is for you. So let's give a big Zimmerman podcast welcome to Cammie, who has had the unique position of seeing me up close as a floral designer and wedding planner to a brand new educator and now a seasoned coach and mentor. Let's dive in. Welcome to the Zimmerman Podcast with your host, CEO, wedding professional, educator, and mom, Jessica Zimmerman. In just two years, Jessica went from facing bankruptcy to taking home a six-figure salary. She turned a business-saving $100,000 loan into a million-dollar empire. As a creative entrepreneur, a healthy work-life balance seems just as unattainable as a six-figure income. But Jessica Zimmerman is here to show you it's possible. With the right tools and insider tips and some hard work, your craziest dreams can become your daily routine. If you set some boundaries and commit to healthy changes, you can create a business and a life you love. So let's make your business work for you. Cammie, welcome to the podcast. Hi. How's it going? Great. Good, good, good. Okay, so what I want to talk about today is I want to talk about your Know Your Numbers story. So let's start at the beginning. And real quick, I just want to start kind of the very beginning, how you and I came to know each other. So I did a wedding of a friend of yours, correct? Yes. Oh my gosh. So fun. <laughs> <Isn't that crazy? laughs> and she, like after I did her wedding is when I first wrote Business Behind the Blooms. And now did she, because I don't really fully know the story. Did she tell you about me or what happened? I think I officially met you like up in the bridal suite because I went up there to, you know, see, see Sid and all that. And I think it was either I met you or Kelly or someone on your team. And they're like, oh, this is Jessica or whatever. But, you know, it was wedding day. It's crazy, crazy. Probably a year later, she was like, oh, my gosh, you have to buy business behind the blooms. You have to do it because it's incredible. I've heard awesome things about it. And so I was like, well, sure, why not? She's, you know, <laughs> she, the wedding was incredible. So I'm sure she's got really great things to say. So I bought Business Behind the Blooms. And the thing about it was it was so real and raw and authentic. And I really loved like hearing the raw, real side of business versus the, you know, everything's perfect and great. And this is what I did to make it perfect and great. Um, and it's, and I still, I still refer back to it probably weekly. I love that. And I love that, um, you know, that was the thing with writing Business Behind the Blooms is, I, I don't know, there was something about it that I think a lot of people who write online courses, they still are very dependent on that being their, like that industry being their source of income. And for me, I just always kind of had this attitude of, I, I don't really know why I'm in the wedding industry. I, but it's not necessarily to do weddings forever. I just kind of knew that in my gut. And so right. it was really easy for me to share everything and not just like 60%. It was nice just to kind of write it all down. And um, it, it was amazing just the the how much people have, I guess, um, related to or enjoyed reading <laughs> not reading someone else's struggle, but it was relatable because you're like, oh my gosh, I have felt that way. I've done that. Yeah. You talked about a couple of scenarios in there. That's like, um, dealing with an employee or, um, a client who maybe turns into not so enjoyable to be around. And it's like, oh my <laughs> yep, gosh, yep. I've totally, totally been there and I'm not alone. I'm not the only one that's 
had a struggle with someone on my team or I'm not the only one that has had Bridezilla walk in my door. So I want to talk about your personal life, meaning like your personal relationships, your relationship with your kids, with your husband, with your friends before going through Know Your Numbers. So tell me kind of about your personal relationships. Uh, My husband has type 1 diabetes, and so that plays a huge factor into our finances. Um, He is self-employed as a realtor, and I own my own business, which means we don't have traditional insurance. We have like a MediShare plan, um, and then we have two dogs as well, which um, is kind of on the smaller spectrum of our finances. But with all of those... Um, our, our relationships, money aside, I feel like have, has always had this kind of like black cloud over our relationships because finances affect everything. Um, and so does health or sickness as well. So with my husband, he got diagnosed two years ago with type one diabetes. He was on the verge of a coma, um, from, from a very, very, very high blood sugar. And, um, that paired with just finances in general being self-employed, the stress of being self-employed under two people is just super stressful. And so uh, we would get in fights all the time. Uh, my kids, I wouldn't be focused on my kids because it was um, checking checking my email to make sure I'm getting inquiries so that I can pay for, you know, X, Y, Z. And so there was a huge cloud over us on you know our our family and our relationships can't just be it um was just stressful and so both of us would snap at each other or snap at the kids and because we're stressed because we just we we don't know I was under the assumption that my husband was taking care of the personal finances and he was under the assumption that I was. And so we came to find out that neither of us was doing anything for the personal finances. We were paying the minimums on our credit cards and making the minimum payments on his student loans and um, just paying as little as we could to get by. And then we actually went through uh, the mod modular that goes through personal finances together um, just to make sure that we were on the same page. We had a clear picture of where we were and where we were going. Um, Having all of the stresses of a lifetime disease and, and two jobs that aren't guaranteed income. Um, we have to we have to know where we're at and we have to know that our finances are tight and without that you know everything else kind of has flipped upside down it's just stressful and frustrating and um i think knowing where we were was stressful in it in it of itself knowing that we had some debt and um knew that our our expenses every month as a family were higher than probably average because of the diabetes. Um, You know, it was stressful going through it, knowing what was going on, but afterwards feeling um, kind of alleviated, just knowing, actually knowing where we're at. So we actually went through that together. I love that y'all did that together. And Brian and I go through that module together every year. And it's module two, where we really go through personal finances. And I think that what you said is so, you hit the nail on the head with so many couples. I mean, thank you for being so honest about that, because I think there are a lot of couples out there um, who are paying the minimum on their credit cards and the minimum on their student loans and who have something, listen, you and I both know what it's like to have a husband who has a, 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 an illness that we've got some extra bills to pay. And we know that. And there's a lot of people out there who have extra bills or extra expenses beyond just your living expenses. Right. And I think that in a lot of ways, it's just easy to go through life knowing, well, as long as there's money in the account to pay for things, like it's, we're, we're surviving. Again, just the survival mode. And it is a little scary the first time that you do this, but there's also something that's really, in my opinion, um, 
powerful because it's almost like, okay, now I'm taking back the power of this. Like I've let, I've let you kind of do this and I've, whether I want to admit it or not, I've kind of been living in fear because I didn't really want to know because we were always okay. But now I'm about to take the power back on this. What was that like the two of you sitting down together and opening up that module together and going through it? Um, so it's funny, both of us, um, are firstborns in both of our families. And so we're both, uh, strong willed, stubborn, think we know it all. Um, and so we, I think we went into it thinking, well, I know where we're at. And he's like, no, I know where we're at. We're doing fine. I'm like, I don't think we are. Um, and so going into it, we were both kind of butting heads a little bit with some of our pride thinking that we had it all figured out and, and all that. But also I think secretly both knowing that we actually don't, <laughs> we actually need to go through this. So uh, we got into a couple arguments actually going through it and figuring out, um, well, oh my gosh, I thought we were only spending, you know, a thousand dollars on this. And now I know that we're spending $2,500 on this. What the heck? I, where did this come from? So we got into some fights about it a little bit, just, not not knowing and not being on the same page only causes frustration and only causes um to to have arguments about it and so you know the process of going through it was needed and i think we have you know being firstborns and stubborn and also being the owners of both of both of our businesses we're both strong headed in that um but it it's a shared thing and uh, we both had to admit that, yeah, I don't know where we're at, but we need to do it. So it, it was freeing at the end of it, but through it, uh, gosh, there were some nights that we didn't talk afterwards because we were like, God, I can't believe what happened. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so and really what that is, is you're upset with yourself. Like you're upset with yourself that you didn't look at this sooner. And you, it, it's easiest to take that frustration out on the one that we love most is oh, exactly. really what it, what it boils down to. I yeah, because at the end of the day, I was like, I should have been checking the bank account. I should have been uh, keeping track of what we we're spending, but I'm going to take it out on him because he's the one that spent it. So, meh, 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 like, <laughs> you have to deal with it. But totally internally knowing, yeah, I, I could have been taking responsibility of, of this all along, but I didn't. So was there anything that you noticed when y'all went through it that you were like, holy cow, I had no clue. Oh my gosh. Fast food in general, <laughs> like anything fast food it was crazy. We live life just so on the fly of, you know, networking events are late or, you know, we get stuck at work longer or whatever. Um, he grew up in a family that ate out all the time. And I grew up in a family that we had, you know, dinner at home every night. And it was rare that we ate out. And so when both of us kind of clashed into each other, we and owning our own businesses, we ate out almost every single meal. And we came <laughs> at the end of 2018. Um, we were like, holy cow. We probably spent close to ten grand or more on just fast food because I mean, with the family of four, yeah, we're eating fast food for everything, yeah. and um, and wasn't drinking much water. Twenty eighteen, um, he was newly diagnosed with diabetes that year, um, and before that, he was drinking like seven Coca Colas a day, um, sometimes per meal, wow. and. Um, we should have added up how many sodas we uh, paid for in 2017, but we didn't. Um, and so it was kind of coming off of that. Um, yeah. Did you walk away from going through that module about personal finances with any personal finance goals? Like, did you sit down with him and go, okay, here's our goal. And did that feel good? Yeah, we actually knowing what it was, it was freeing to leave that knowing, okay, this is what we have in debt in 2019, we're going to pay off this in debt. Um, mm -hmm. It was good to sit down and, and know what the numbers were. 
and then put goals associated with those numbers in order, like knowing that we spent over 10 grand in fast food. Okay. For 2019, I know that we both also still own businesses, so um, we can't, you know, make that number zero, but let's maybe try to cut that in half instead of doing right. that. And then maybe at the end of 2019, we can look at cutting that number in half again. Um, but making, I love the the acronym SMART goals. The, gosh, of course, I forget what the, <laughs> you know, labels were for those, but they're the measurable, the attainable, yeah. the realistic, yeah. time sensitive. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so, Oh, good. You, know, you have to make sure that what you are putting as goals, whether it be for your business revenue goals or your or your personal uh, budget goals, like they have to be smart goals. They can't just be, uh, you know, in a perfect world. <laughs> you know, I want to spend X. Uh, you actually have to make sure that they are attainable. They go along with your life. Yeah, all of that. What was your process like, or was there even a process before going through Know Your Numbers? So I was was doing it all on my own for the first five years. In the last two years, I've recently had a staff uh, that works for me. And so before, when it was just me on my own doing everything, um, I didn't really have really a planning time of the year at all. I was totally flying by the seat of my pants. And just hoping, you know, as long as there was some money in the bank account, whether it was, you know, less than $100 at some point, and then, Mm -hmm. you know, now we're doing much better. But um, when, when there was money in the bank account, I felt like, hey, we must be doing something right. Like everything's fine. Everything's good. um, No problem at all. But I did not have a planning period of my month or my year at all. I didn't do any budgeting. I felt like my business was doing just enough to get by. Um, It, of course, wasn't making a profit. So I was... What's that feeling like? Can we talk about that just a second? What's that feeling like of you've been in a business for five years, there's really no plan, and every month I'm just getting by. Like, what does that like do internally to you? Yeah, I was so stressed out, frustrated, and um, honestly oblivious to kind mm-hmm. of the nitty gritty finances of the business. And I think anytime I thought about it, I felt overwhelmed that there was, well, I haven't been doing it for five years, so I'm sure there's so much to do. So I don't have time for it. And when I was doing it all on my own, you know, when you do stuff on your own, you have the inquiries and you have the uh, quotes going back and forth and the details and the actual production of the events. And you have all the things plus running the business and making sure bills get paid. And um, I could go on and on, but I'm sure most of your listeners Mm -hmm. know what I'm talking about. Um, and so the numbers and getting into the finances was honestly not even on my list of to do's because anytime I thought about it, I immediately got frustrated or stressed out like this big monster elephant in the room that I didn't want to deal with because there was just too much to do at that time. And so I just ignored it. Um, I was super oblivious to it. Yeah. It's almost like not ignorance is bliss because I know because I felt the exact same way, Cami, when before I kind of really buckled down and and told myself, you've got to figure this out or you're going to go bankrupt. Um, I really had this feeling of, I don't even know that that's important to look at. Like, I didn't even know that that was, which sounds crazy. It sounds crazy today when I say that out loud, but you right. are just on this hamster wheel of just the daily grind. It was like, wake up, take care of my baby, go to work, deal with all the customers and all of their questions, close the store and then start, you know, um, at the time I had a rental business. So it was just like, start working on the orders that are going out that, that next day, cleaning things and all of that. And then it now we're into the evening, into the early night. And it's, um, you know, I, I want to go see my baby before she goes down for bed, but also I've got to, you know, do payroll and do these things. Like there just was never time to stop mm-hmm. and go, 
uh huh, maybe I should like create a plan. Maybe I should yeah. stop and look at this because stopping doesn't sound like an answer because if there's only, like you said, and I've been there, even if there was less than a hundred dollars in the account, there was still money in the account. So I was right. surviving, but right. in no way was I thriving in no way. And that is the thing is we continue to be in that place of just survival mode. And there's yeah. only so long that you can be in survival mode before you just are done. Yeah, totally. I think my plan at the time, if you could even call it a plan, was, um, you know, if we needed more money, work harder to get the extra money. And when you were, were doing good and we had money in the bank, oh, that meant I could spend on more inventory or spend on an employee or or what it whatever it was. Um and my plan was ignore the budget until it becomes a problem. Um but there was absolutely zero um plan for your yeah. money. It was like, oh there's a little extra in there. So I'll buy this. Yeah. Oh there's a little yeah. extra so I'll do this for the employee. But there was never a plan of like I have four hundred dollars allotted for the year to spend on employee gifts. There was nothing like that. Yeah, no, not at all. I, um, it's funny. I'd, I've always been um, more of an assumer. Like I would assume something, and so I would make assumptions about what our expenses were. I would throw numbers out, like, "Oh, we have you know twenty thousand dollars of expenses every month." So uh, we just need to make twenty thousand dollars in income. So. Um, and then I'd run like a simple P and L report off QuickBooks, not knowing what any of the things on there meant. Um, and it was like, oh, cool, yeah, we we're profiting, you know, two dollars this month, so we're doing good. <laughs> like we're doing great. Yeah. But didn't but uh-huh. didn't take into effect into effect the yes, I had payroll, yes, I had a rent and utilities and softwares and all of that, which came up to about twenty thousand. But I didn't take into the the other fact that, well, then you have product that you have to buy and things get broken. So you have to replace them and, um, all the extra things you don't, you don't think about that doesn't go into my assumed expenses per month. And so I didn't realize I was digging myself a hole, um, that I was right. getting deeper and deeper in. Do you want to know the biggest mistake that I made before figuring out this program is, and I think I shared this with you, but in the state of Arkansas, they will not take your tax money until after the wedding is done. So let's say someone came to me in January and their wedding wasn't until December. And I worked with them January, February, March, April, May, June, all year long and took payments from them every single month. They would pay taxes they would go in my account. And I just assumed, I love that word, assume. I just assumed because I didn't know any different that so, like somehow those taxes were being taken out. I don't know that my um, accountant that I paid for annually was somehow taking care of all that, right? Was handling it. Right. And right. what I would learn is at the end of the year, after that December wedding was done and that next January came around, all of those taxes that were paid, that's when they're due. And yeah. I honestly thought those were being paid out every month. And that was a big eye opener for me. And I had to, it was some of these things were just as simple as, okay, I need to open up a second account to have as a reserve account. So every right. time I get a payment, I can move the tax money into the reserve so that I have it and I don't spend it. I was spending that money because I just assumed this accountant that I honestly paid once a year, which I didn't pay her to do these monthly things. This was kind of the end of year cap and I didn't know the difference and hadn't educated myself. And so that was something that was really important to me when we built this program was to be really honest about my own financial mistakes and to really make it as simple as possible for other people not to have those same things. Because that is something that if you do that for too long, like I did, can really get you into some financial trouble. I was always playing catch up. So it was like, then I'd get that bill in January of, oh, here's the taxes you owe. And it was like, oh gosh, well now I got to get another wedding to pay for these taxes. And I, I will say, I always was able to pay everything I was always able to pay everything by the by the grace of God, but I mean it would get down to 
I mean, $3 in the bank account sometimes. There were also days that I woke up with being in the red. I would wake up every morning and hope and pray as as my bank page loaded that I wasn't negative. And there were many times that I was. There's been so many times in the past that I, leading up to payday, payroll, I would put all the payroll in and look at our bank account and be like, oh, crap. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to mm-hmm. forego my paycheck this month because I don't know that I can make all of my bills. I've got, uh, you know, my $6,000 rent due and I've got, you know, utilities and maybe we can push this bill a little bit for like pl- kind of playing Jenga a little bit with your finances. Like, I don't take a paycheck here. Maybe I can take it a few days later once we get this payment in and but mm-hmm. it was all in my head. It wasn't even on a spreadsheet. It was like, I think that we're getting like, oh my gosh, it's so funny. I look back and I'm like, what an idiot. <laughs> what was I thinking? If you want to build a great business or live a good life, you've got to plan for it. Every year, I take a whole month to reevaluate the past 12 months and figure out what worked, what didn't, and how I can create a life I love for the following year. I teach you my exact planning process in my program, Know Your Numbers, annual planning for your best year. If you want a free training to get some tips on planning your best year yet, go to ZimmermanPodcast.com slash Know Your Numbers. That's ZimmermanPodcast.com slash Know Your Numbers. And what I love about Know Your Numbers is for me, I was... I think that there's can be so much shame put around, you know, finances and spending and debt. And I really just want to take all that shame off. Like, I just want to take all that shame off and be like, listen, first of all, I don't judge anyone with how they spend their money because we all have very different lives. I have a friend who she is in on the road almost all the time. Like she basically works all the time on the road and she's a really nice car. And I think, you know what, if I was on the road six days a week, I'd probably want to have a nice car too, but I don't, I'm not. So I don't really care about having a nice car. I'm perfectly fine with the good old minivan. And although we're, we are going to have to, you know, get rid of that at some point, but <laughs> I'm just grateful to have a car that, you know, can get me from point A to point B but I don't judge her for having a nice car. You know what I mean? It's like, that's what she wants to spend her money on. Do it. And if somebody, if, you know, wants to spend their money on clothes, that's fine. But we need to just create a plan for that. And we need to know what is possible. And I really love uh, the thing about Know Your Numbers that I really wanted to, to get across was that there is no shame in this. Like everyone has got their stuff. Everyone has overspent at some point. There are a lot of people out there with debt. And now let's just look at it in the face. Let's rip the bandaid off. Let's look at it. And then let's get the plan together. And you have to start with your with your personal before we go into business. So tell me a little bit about your business finances before Know Your Numbers. Yeah. So I... um. Gosh, I'm I've always been terrible at math. I've always been terrible at anything numbers related. So uh when it was know your numbers, I was like, well crap, I don't know what my numbers are, so I should probably take this course. Um and so my personal finances or my business finances, sorry, were um, like I said at the beginning, just flying by the seat of my pants. I assume I make this per month and I assume this is what our expenses are. So we must be doing all right. And um, mm-hmm. I, <laughs> it's so funny. I totally was pretending to know what my numbers were without actually like knowing what my numbers were. Um and, it, and I knew it was something I needed to do. It was just stressful and overwhelming. So I didn't, it, it was just this massive task that felt like too large to take on. And so, um, but then I also, I have employees. And so I felt a huge responsibility to know what my numbers were because, you know, I was essentially responsible for all the people who worked for me. Um, and so I knew I couldn't go any longer not knowing what the numbers were, my, um, my 2018 felt like, um, 
you know the movie Yes Man? <laughs> I felt like we were the yes yeah. man. I feel like we just said yes, yes, yes to every single thing. And um, if any of the listeners remember seeing comments saying that that girl who did 500 events, yeah, that was me. Um, because we did 500 mm-hmm. events and it felt like the business was growing minute by minute. And we were feeling so overwhelmed and um, it kind of came to a boiling point of we're spending so much on payroll because there's so much to do. We're spending so much on SEO. We're spending so much on an accountant because we feel like we should be to make sure we're doing things right. And, um, and I couldn't keep going thinking that all of this is normal. My expenses, um, over the course of time, we're growing up to like forty to fifty thousand dollars per month just in expenses, mm-hmm. um, and that's not taking into effect growing anything. It wasn't buying any more inventory. It was just taking care of what needed to be done. And so, if I wanted more inventory, it was additional in addition to that forty to fifty thousand, and. Um, and I would see that on our P and L report that my accountant would produce. I was like, "How on earth fifty thousand is a lot of freaking money? Where is all of that going?" Like, I don't understand. And so when the um, the Bloomer Intensive came out, I was like, "I need to, I need to know. I can't just keep going assuming that you know everything's being taken care of because I don't want to do five hundred events. <laughs> That's crazy." Um, Mm -hmm. I don't want to say yes to every single thing because we're worried that we might not make, you know, make our rent or make payroll. And so I really got to know, um, we're spending, gosh, probably $80,000. I think the number was $80,000 on inventory per year. Um, so that in addition to the $50,000 per month. Um, so if you spread that out, that's a lot of money. Um, yeah, we were making a lot of money. money. We were bringing in six hundred thousand dollars of revenue, but six hundred thousand dollars of revenue was going right out the door to other expenses, and so we were at a loss, which is crazy. I'm like six hundred thousand dollars. You should have plenty of money in the bank account. Well, we had like negative. We had debt on in addition to it, and we couldn't pay it off. And so I needed to know. I needed to know what our numbers were, and I didn't at all. <laughs> yeah, I've always felt completely um, like a kindred spirit with you. I remember when you did a one-on-one mentoring session with me, and you started telling me all those things, and I thought, "Oh my gosh! Like this is why I went through this, so that I could help." people like Cami because it was the same story. Like for me, I was bringing in 30,000 a month, but I was spending $30,000 a month or I was bringing in 30 and then I'd spend 31. And then I was bringing in 30 and then I'd spend 29, five. Like it was just always right there. And I so related to your story. And do you, I think what's interesting is in business behind the blooms. And I, I talk about things like, I realized I didn't want to do that many weddings a year. I realized that my ideal life would be to bring home a salary of this amount of money and only do this amount of weddings a year. And and then I explain how I do that. However, what I didn't explain is like, well, how did you figure that out? Like, what's the calculation? What's the calculation? How do you figure out how much yeah. to pay yourself and how much, how many events you can do. Because if you don't know how many events you can do, or if you or, or someone's out there and you're, and you're a, you have a hair salon, if you don't know how many haircuts or colors or whatever you need to do, you just take every single inquiry that comes your way, every single call, every single booking, and then you're exhausted. And so when I said I was going to share that process, a lot of you jumped on board and you were one of them. So what was it that made you go, yeah, I, I really need this? I feel like it honestly came at the perfect time. I feel like I was I took the BBB. Um, I think I purchased it in September of 2018. And then the Know Your Numbers came out um, for November. And so 
Um, it honestly came at the perfect time. I knew that we were starting to calculate kind of what we were doing for the year. And by October of that year, we were already up to 400 something events. I was like, holy cow, it's not even the end of the year. And Mm -hmm. we've done more than one event per day on average. And that's crazy. Um, There was one or two weekends that we had 22 events per weekend, meaning from Thursday to Monday, not even Monday to Monday. And uh, knowing that we were in a crappy place and knowing that uh, we were bringing in close to $600,000 a year and didn't have anything to show for that uh, was, was like, oh, crap, moments where know your numbers came and I was like, I don't know my numbers. So the play mm-hmm. on words on that is <laughs> perfect, I think. Um, because I think most of us who own our own businesses probably don't know our own numbers. And that's not even to say like, you know, assumed numbers or you can log into your bank account and you know you have $52,000 in the bank account or $2 in the bank account. Like that's not knowing your numbers. Knowing your numbers is knowing exactly to the dollar how much you're spending on uh, payroll or rent or utilities or softwares. Knowing your numbers is actually knowing the nitty gritty numbers of your business, not just logging into your bank account or pulling a quick report on your system, knowing how much you're doing. And also knowing things like, for for example, with you, with rental, knowing what's your what's your budget this year? And don't let the word budget scare you, you guys. Like yeah. budget, it's just, it. all budget is, is just, it's telling you where your money can go, where your money can go if you wish for it to go there. And so for you wanting new inventory, it's knowing exactly how much in 2020 you can spend on new inventory. Yeah. You, you know. And so if you see something in March and you want it, you know exactly if you have enough money to, to, to buy that or not. There's something really freeing about that. It's also wonderful to know how much money you can spend on payroll. Therefore, if you can hire, do a new hire or not, or right. how many events you really do have to take. You know exactly how many events you need to take this year, or you'll know exactly how many haircuts you need to do or, or whatever. I've got to come up with a new example, but, um, but that's really, really freeing. Yeah. So were you t- relieved to find out that you didn't have to go through your year kind of pretending that you knew what you were doing, but that you could actually know what you're doing? Oh my gosh, totally. I felt so freed and so, um, relieved there and don't you think confident yes don't you think once you once you know these numbers you almost walk a little taller and you can walk into your business like like, and that helps you sell better that helps you be a better boss like for me that's what it did for me it made me confident Yeah. yeah so some of the words that I strive to be as a CEO of my company are wise timely and caring and if I don't know what my numbers are, I'm, I'm for sure not wise. So if I'm doing something in order to get me there, know, know your numbers is, is something that gets you for sure on the track to being more wise about your numbers, not just being smart about your numbers, but being wise. We, um, Kaylee, who, who's on my team, she's been with me for two years. She um, does some sales as well for me. And going through Know Your Numbers last year and having that budget in place, there were a couple months where we said, hey, or she would come to me and ask, hey, do we, I have this smaller event. It's not necessarily um, hitting our minimum. However, is this going to hit our goal for the month? Where are we at on our goal for the month? I need to know, should we take this or should we, can we say no to this? And so it was good to know I can go back to my budget and say, uh, yeah, we've actually hit the goal for the month. So if if it's a necessary yes, then sure, we can take it. But know that you have the ability to say no to it because we've already hit our goal for the month. So it's good to go back throughout the year. And when questions came up on, hey, can we buy this piece? Or, um, hey, do we have to take this event? or Or do we need to take more? We can go back to the budget and say, Yes, we've hit that goal for the month, or no, we we need to take that. So that was super super helpful. 
for sure this year. That is a really powerful position to be able to go, you know what, I don't want to do that. (laughs) And so I'm going to say no, and I'm still going to be just fine. Why is taking time out for this transformation? Why is that important? Yeah. So I think... (laughs) So it's funny, my my favorite modular was modular one, which goes through um, essentially how do you spend your time and how do you want to spend your time and just kind of a review on the year. And so I realized that my days are spent with email, <laughs> mainly email being open. And so something that I told myself last year that I was going to do in 2019 was um, do my most important tasks first before I even look at my email. I deleted email off my phone. I can't even access it. Um, And so when (laughs) it was super hard, oh my gosh, I literally felt like I was a drug addict because I was like looking at my phone thinking (laughs) that my phone buzzed because there was an email and it was literally nothing. Um, So silly. Um, But going (laughs) going through the process, And knowing that you have to commit some time to it, having it already in place that I'm doing my most important tasks first was super important because um, no matter where you're at in business, whether you do know some of your numbers or not, this course is super important. And so if you put it at the top of your priority list for the day, um, I thankfully have a staff so I can say, hey, on um, every Monday or Tuesday or whatever day you want to do it, every Monday or whatever, I'm going to take four hours and go through all of this. Half my day is going to go through this entire process. Um, so I need you to take all of these tasks off my plate for today. Um, in the years that I didn't have that, granted, I wasn't doing business like I am today, but if I were to do this and not have a staff under me, um, I would get it done no matter what because I think it's so important to actually get it done Um, and putting it at the top of your priority list for the day, getting it done first, one makes you more confident in the rest of your decisions you have to do for the rest of the day because you're knowledgeable and you're knowing what's going on. But two, it just, it actually gets done if you do it first versus saying, oh, I'll get that done later. And then three o'clock rolls around and you're like, well, I don't have enough time to do it now. So I'll do it tomorrow. And then it get you know, you get on, the, on that loophole of doing it, saying you're going to do it over and over, but never do it. Running a floral business isn't always as pretty as the flowers themselves. I spent more than $100,000 educating myself and figuring out how to make this business work for me and fully support my family of five. If you're wanting to know how to not only run a profitable business, but also hear all my firsthand experiences of navigating how to deal with difficult brides, make automated systems, create proposals, set boundaries in your work, and book every bride you want, you need to check out Business Behind the Blooms. Go to ZimmermanPodcast.com slash BBB to get more information. That's ZimmermanPodcast.com slash BBB. What revelations did you have after you finished module one? Like, did you have any aha moments. I actually do every year. I do this, I do this program every single year. And that's why every single year my business gets better and it grows and it becomes more successful because I take the time out to do this every year because every year we grow, every year we change, every year I'm I'm, I'm saying we as human beings, we change, we grow, we evolve. And it's really important to kind of have that little check-in. And it's perfectly okay, especially if you are an entrepreneur, this is or a business owner, like this is how our brain just naturally works. We can get bored of want to change things and that's okay. And rather than shaming ourselves about it, it's okay to go, okay, well, let me, let me listen to that. Like, how do I pivot this a little bit? So I know that you definitely made some changes after this that were probably a little scary at first, but tell me about those realizations and the changes that you made after module one. Yeah. So modular one is 100% my favorite one. I loved it both years for 
similar but different reasons. The first year I really loved because I actually got to dive into what I was actually doing versus what I assumed I was doing Um, and then make a plan for what I wanted my day to be structured like, Um, meaning um, I spent a ton of time on email when I probably didn't need to be and not enough time on growing my business than working inside of my business. And so that was what I learned the first year, actually putting it down on paper. Um, And then this year, um, realizing that the vision board really does a lot. I had the vision board that you do at the end of modular one on my desktop, my laptop screensaver, um, a little printout on my bathroom mirror. Um, It was on my screen background on my phone. And so I literally saw it everywhere and people asked me about it all the time. And looking at it every single day, I totally was like, eh, it's probably not going to (laughs) work. Like I'll put it on and we'll see what happens. But 95% of what was on my vision board for 2019, I actually did. Um, And then I have a new and improved one for 2020, and I'm excited to see where that goes. And so um, I think actually seeing it in person all the time is really beneficial. And then you can take the same concept with the budget. If you're looking at your budget over and over and over and over and over again, then you'll actually know what's going on versus um, ignoring it and making assumptions then again. So I think the aha moment is the more you look at it, the more you're going to be comfortable and know that you're actually going to do what you say you're going to do. I love you because you're such a good student. Like you actually follow directions. <laughs> <laughs> actually do the work. Um, was there a moment though in module one, because I know, cause you and I had a couple of one-on-ones and you shared a lot with me. Was there ever a moment, because that's really a time where you're really being honest about what you really want out of life. Was there anything that you were like, Oh, I really don't want to be working this much or, Oh, I don't know if I want to do this as much. Maybe I'd rather do this. Was there anything like that? Yeah, I um, knew I didn't want to work as much. I felt like I was working so hard on the wrong things, not the right things. And I think everywhere you look, it always says work hard, work hard, work hard, work hard. But are you really working hard on the right things? Or are you just working hard just to work hard? And so my personal life, I was getting home at seven or eight, the kids went to bed at eight, eight thirty. So I only saw them for 30 minutes a day. And so one of the things that I realized and, and didn't, I guess I realized, but didn't really realize was that I was working so hard on the things that weren't benefiting the business or benefiting me personally in the long run. I was just filling my day with all the stuff that you think you should be doing um, that isn't moving the needle at all. If you're a business, then you should be making money. And I think sometimes women in particular, for whatever reason, struggle with that struggle. They think that's selfish or they think, um, I don't know that that's somehow wrong to want, they, that they think they should be saying, like, no, I just like the creative freedom that I have. And it's like, no, if you have like there's a hobby and there's a business and if you're a business, a business is profitable and you should be setting up your business and treating your business as if you were going to sell it in two to five years and no one's going to buy your business if it isn't profitable. And I think the other thing you shared that is so, I mean, my gosh, I love that you shared this because you are so, um, I think there's a lot of women out there that are doing this. They think they are working so hard. So it's like, it's okay that right now I'm only seeing my kid for a few minutes a day because here in a few years, this is all going to pay off and I'm going to get to spend all this time with them. But the truth is, is until you know your numbers, until you do this work, these things are only going to either stay the same or get worse. And they will eventually get worse because there's only so much your brain can, can take of this. And so knowing it, like once you look at that and you go, wow, 
I am spending all of this time. I have nothing to show for it. I, because it's it, it's almost like you could justify it, right? If you were making all of this money or something, you're like, okay, I can justify it because um, I'm making all this money, or I'm or I'm doing this or that. But it's like you're really not doing anything that impactful, and you're missing all of your time with your loved ones. And so something has to has to change. Um, and so I think that that is, I love that you shared that. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Well, and I think knowing your numbers is so important. Sometimes as women, we can have a fear of success, which is so silly because I think you hear all about the fear, fear of failure, um, the fear of sharing your failure. Um, however, I think there's a big thing about fear of success, especially for women, because I think if you look at women over time and the amount of successful women over time versus the amount of successful men over time is a huge gap. And one, the attention that might come with being successful or um, even the like, don't look at me or I'm not, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm okay. Like I'm, I'm doing fine. I don't need to have more money. I want to be able to share more or um, kind of that good Samaritan women type of thing. And sometimes the fear of success might hinder you from looking at your numbers um, because you want to play small or, or you don't want as much attention on you just in case you do fail. You don't want people looking at you when you do, Um, which is just, it's silly that that's even a thing. But it's very real, very, very real. What was this past year like work-wise versus all the other years since you went into the year knowing your numbers and you went in with a plan? How has this year been different for you as far as your personal and your business life and your finances? Yeah, it's astronomically different. Um, And I think I talked about this on the last mastermind, but a year ago, you and I had a one-on-one and I think you could probably see the stress on my face (laughs) of like, (laughs) oh my gosh, what is going on with the world? Um, And And I'm so sympathetic to that because I was there, like I was right there. So I get it. I really do get it. I hope you feel that when you talk to me that I really get it. Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, so a year ago, gosh, I was so stressed and I was like, um, I care. So I carry my stress in my shoulders. <laughs> um, like my shoulders will get super tight and I'll need to go to the chiropractor, go to the, um, mas- massage therapist. And a year ago, you, I, my shoulders are probably up to my ears. I was so stressed. I was so, so, so stressed saying yes to everything and um, not seeing all the hard work that me and my team was putting in and not seeing a bigger number in the um, checking account or savings account for that matter. Um, Not seeing the numbers where I wanted to see them. Um, Gosh, I would have wanted to see anything above 10,000 at the end of a pay period or at the end of a um, payout of bills. And this year, um, it's not, you know, it's not astronomical, but we're hitting anywhere from 50 to $80,000 in our checking account after pay period. And after, um, all the bills have been paid, which is incredible. And what a huge difference. I mean, oh my goodness, what a huge difference from all those years before, (laughs) Many Not times having to money. sacrifice your own paycheck because there was only going to be ten dollars in the account or something if once you paid payroll to now being able to pay payroll and there being fifty grand in the account like hello that is night and day yeah yeah it's crazy um I think one of the biggest misconceptions I had before was I would look at the account before we hit payroll and then not look at it afterwards because I didn't want to know. I didn't want to know what our bank account would get to. Um, I, mean, I was I was being slightly responsible knowing that 
you know, we had 20 grand in the bank account and we had 19 grand to pay out in payroll. So I knew we'd have money in it. It wasn't that I was being oblivious to, well, we'll see what checks bounce today kind of thing. <laughs> um, but I know I would look at the bank account before and be like, oh, we're doing really great. We can pay payroll. Awesome. And then not look at it afterwards and kind of give that oblivion uh, baseball cap on. And now this year I can look at payroll before and look at it afterwards and feel confident that we're doing good. Were you able to pay anything off personally or business-wise or go on a trip that you wanted to with your family that you never thought you'd get to do? Did you get to do anything like that? Yes. So my husband and I went to Mexico this past year over the summer. We went over to um, Playa de Mujeres, which is where we went to our honeymoon. So we got to go back there. Um, We put the goal to do that without kids, which was awesome. And then um, business wise, we paid off 50 grand of, of debt this year, which before we didn't have a plan to do so. We just would pay the minimums on it uh, just to get by. So, so we had the numbers, you still would have been doing the minimums and you were able to pay off 50 grand. Totally. Oh my gosh. I probably, if I didn't take know your numbers, I would probably be doing the same thing I was doing before. Just assuming we were doing okay without actually looking. Mm-hmm. But the confidence, I think that comes from know your numbers and being able to go into the year knowing exactly where we're at and exactly where we need to go. And then not only just looking at them in January, but looking at them in January and February and March and April and so on, I think is so essential. You can't just make a plan and throw it out there and hopefully it goes well. You have to actually do it. And I also think that once you start to see the change, it becomes a lot easier, almost exciting. It's almost like working out or something. You know, once you start running and you see a, re- a result, you go, oh, I'm gonna, I, I want to run a little bit more and see more results. Or um, it's almost like that once you start that first month seeing a difference in your bank account, it becomes easier and almost exciting to sit down once a month and look at your numbers. And that's what I encourage is once a month, at the very least, once a quarter, sitting down and we give you all the tools to do that and everything. But it's really, it's it's really impactful, really powerful. I really think that's what it's about at the end of the day is how do I want to feel? This has nothing to do with a person or a thing. How do I want to feel? Like, without a person or a thing, like just me, like, how do I want to feel? And I think for me, you know, your numbers gives me such a feeling of freedom and confidence. And, and, you know, I feel I, like you said, one of your words is wise. I feel so much wiser knowing my numbers. And I feel like I could go into any boardroom of any business person and go toe to toe with them because my numbers may not be as big, but I know mine. You know, they could ask me, what was your profit in November? I'm going to know it or whatever it is. Um, Do you think that you are becoming more of the person that you want to be or um, beginning to feel like the person that you want, like like how you want to feel? Yeah, 100%. I think um, the owner of the company, I think there's a lot of people who say you're the creative director or you play down your role. You say, oh, I'm the sales sales manager or I'm the fill in the blank with whatever you want to fill it in with. But um, if you turn that into, I'm now the CEO of my business, I think if you feel, if, if you know your numbers and you um, are feeling more wise and you're feeling more trustworthy and more responsible for what you are doing, you're actually going to feel like you are a CEO, whereas you could say, oh, I'm the CEO of my company, but you have no idea where you're at. You're not going to feel like a CEO of your company. You're going to feel like the creative director of your company because a creative director doesn't need to know all the numbers. You might need to know a few, but not all of them. And so if you're really the CEO of your company and you're the owner of your company and you don't know your numbers, or you don't know what's going on in your business, then you're not going to feel like that. 
So that's why you were, you are going to create the titles like creative director or head of marketing or head of all the things. So I think if you know your numbers, you're going to feel like the, the confident CEO that you should be for your company. I know um, we've created Know Your Numbers to have lifetime access. Do you think that you will do this program every year? 100%. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. What is it about the spreadsheets that you found helpful? Um, I think the spreadsheets, one, it's easy to understand. It's in terms that are one, accounting terms, and two, normal people terms, if that makes sense. Like, I feel like I can understand what's going on and not look at a P&L report. When that spreadsheet was first created, because I explained what I needed and everything, and it was brought to me, and I said, uh, nope, still don't understand any of it. Like, I, don't, I can't use these words. We can't. This doesn't make sense. This... So what I really worked so hard with hand in hand with the CPA was getting this to still do everything it needs to do in the accounting world, but to use language that anyone can understand that makes it really simple and easy to break down. And so that's what, that's what I love about it. And I love having everything in one little place, my personal finances and my business finances. And it's right there and it's easy and it's, I love having it all right there. Yeah. If there's a term on there, just Google it and you can figure it out. But I think the best thing is that it's, my accountant can look at it and know what's going on and I can look at it and know what's going on. And they might be thinking in a completely CPA accountant type of mind that I do not have, but we can look at it and know the same information. Absolutely. What would you say to someone who is thinking about taking know your numbers, but they're on the fence because it is a a little bit of an investment and, you know, people are just thinking, oh, I can't do that now. I'm going to wait and do it next year. Like, what would you say to someone who's thinking about doing it, but they're on the fence? (laughs) Honestly, I would say, what are you waiting for? But like, seriously, what, what is it that they're waiting for? Is it something that's holding them back? And if it is, then I would ask yourself, you know, what is that thing that's holding you back and will it interfere with a bigger priority in your life? And is, honestly, is know your number is something that is a priority to them. If it's not, and you want to keep living your life as not knowing what's going on in your business number wise, and still living the life, how you're living it, one, is that the life you want to live? And two, if it is, then go for it. (laughs) I would also say, what is it the fear of failure that's holding you back? Is it the fear of the unknown or even the fear of success that's holding you back? Like if if taking know your numbers is going to make you feel successful, is it the fear of success and actually making it that's holding you back? Or is it this big audacious elephant in the room of your numbers and the fear of well, I don't know I'm what I'm going to find in there that I'm not proud of or I don't want to admit to. Or is it the fear of failure? I don't know anything about accounting or anything about numbers, so I don't want to step into what might be the fear of failure and not being confident to answer those questions or know where to find that information. And if, even if it's one of those three, fear of the unknown, fear of success, or fear of, fear of failure, then honestly, suck it up. You're the CEO of your company. You should do it anyways. Um, That's Mm -hmm. my, I mean, that's my opinion. Um, Just do it. Are you a a hobby or a business? And if you're a business, you absolutely have to know this. And just hearing your testimony of, you know, less than a hundred dollars to now having over 50 grand a month after payroll, also being able to pay down $50,000 in debt. Like these are, huge things. And if you're thinking, well, wait, wait a minute, I'm just so, I've got so much more debt than that. I've got so much more, like now's the time to start shipping away at it little by little. And this teaches you exactly how to do that while still, this doesn't mean, and I think sometimes people are fearful because they go, well, if I look at that and I see 
just how much debt I have or just how poorly I'm spending or just whatever, then I'm not going to be able to live life anymore. Like I'm just going to have to work and pay down everything and work and pay down everything. And I am, am a big believer in still being able to live your life. Um, who is know your numbers for? Honestly, I think it's for anyone. For most people who follow you, Jessica, I assume they're florists primarily in the wedding industry. Um, but myself, I have taken the business behind the blooms, know your numbers, the pinning course, uh, been in the mastermind. And I can tell you from someone who is in the corporate event space, not even the wedding, and someone who mostly does rentals, not floral. So kind of the opposite of your typical client. I would say it's for anyone in the event industry specifically, but I think anyone in any small business can take this course and and feel confident going into it. I don't think you necessarily have to be in the wedding industry or be a florist to be able to take it and uh, succeed from it. I can tell you I'm not a flor I'm not a wedding florist and my business has seen huge success from it. Tell me three words you would use to describe yourself before know your numbers. Um, I would say I was ignorant and oblivious before Know Your Numbers. And what about after? After I would feel, I feel like I have a relieved responsibility. Like I feel relieved. I feel, um, less stressed and like a confident responsibility for my numbers and excited about where knowing what what everything is will do for my company. I love it. I love it. You are going to have such a great year. I'm so excited. Okay. I'm going to ask you the question that I ask everyone I interview at the end. Are you ready? If you had Oprah's money, which I mean, you're well on your way after, you know, (laughs) knowing your numbers. So if you had Oprah's money and you had to spend it on something completely selfish just for you, what would it be? Um, I would hire staff for myself. <laughs> I would hire staff. I would hire like a nutritionist slash personal trainer slash assistant of all things. Like go grocery shopping for me because I hate grocery shopping <laughs> or like make my food or tell me what to do to work out. Like, you know, owning a business is so much of your brain space. So I feel like I would need an assistant for life <laughs> like to go do all the things that I hate doing. That's what I would do with my money. <laughs> I would hire staff. <laughs> Such a good answer. Um, thank you so much, Kami, for sh- sitting down and just sharing with me how this program helped you and being so honest and vulnerable with all of your answers. I really appreciate it. I know that you helped a lot of people listening. So thank you so much. Well, Jessica, thank you so much. You have done, gosh, so many wonders for, I know, my business and my life personally. Gosh, I feel like before I met you and took your courses, life was a crapshoot. And now I feel like um, like I can conquer the world. Like I feel so much confident after knowing you and in taking all your courses, you're so real and so honest and authentic about where you've been and what you do that I can relate to personally. And I think a lot of other people can as well. So thank you for putting in all the time and blood, sweat and tears to make all of these courses so incredible. And if you're listening and you haven't taken any of her courses, please do yourself a favor and do it because you will never look back. Mm, thank you so much. I can, we can end now because that's just the best thing anyone could ever say to me. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That really means to me because that's why, that's why I, I do what I do to, to be helpful. And to, I just, you know, I don't want anyone just spending 30 minutes a day with their babies. I want them to have this big full life with their families and, and to make money as well with the business that they love. So Thank you for for doing that and having that awesome testimony. I really appreciate it. 
Thank you so much, Cami, for sharing your story with us. I truly believe that my job is to share the uncomfortable truth of what I've experienced in the small business world so that you can feel less alone and use what I've learned to avoid some of those mistakes I've made. I love that Cami was on board for those same things, honesty and vulnerability. I hope I never forget what a privilege it is to share my story and have it change lives like Cami's. Thanks for tuning in to Zimmerman Podcast Episode 16. I'll see you next week. If you loved what you heard today, even if you liked it a lot, you should subscribe and leave a review. We'll see you back here next time in the Zimmerman Podcast.